promise by the grace of God is to engage you with Christ. My promise by the grace of God is to continue to very clearly unveil in very vivid manner the loveliness and the beauty of Christ so that you are engaged with that one needful thing. You can see how so many things will just start taking place in your life. So, and I mean it. Hey, listen. Listen. I want us to come to a point. I want us to come to a point where, Holy Spirit, help me to express myself here. I want us to come to a point where we are beneficiaries of a whole lot of divine orchestrations, especially in the place of rest. So you are just resting, you are just fellowshipping with Jesus, and many things are, God is ordering and arranging things for you. Mm -hmm. You know why I can say this? Because I have gone through different phases of Christian life. I've gone through the phase where, where my mindset was, I'm trying to please God. I'm hoping I'm right with God. So that puts me into what I would call a compulsive drive to get right with God. It's different. When you're asking yourself, okay, I hope I'm right with God. I hope uh, everything is okay. I hope, um, um, you know, in other words, oh, this this thing is not happening because there's a short coming or there's a shortfall in my personality or in my walk with God. You know, that was one phase of my life. Another phase of my life is, hold on. I know that Christ is perfectly pleasing unto God. I know that I am in Christ. I know that that gives me confidence because if Christ is perfectly pleasing unto God, then I am perfectly pleasing unto God because I am in Christ, which is equivalent to simply identifying with Christ. Remember, just you think of it. Remember when in the Old Testament, when they bring the, the sacrifice, the lamp, the first thing the worshiper does is you put your hand on the head of that lamp. You have to put your hand on the head of the lamp. Because that action is a prophetic action that identifies with the lamp. Am I making sense? If you don't put your hand on that lamp, then your sacrifice is almost wasted. So if it is a burnt offering you're bringing, and you're putting your hand on the, on the lamp, on the head of the lamp, it means you are identifying with the innocence of that lamp. If it is a sin offering that you are bringing, it means you are transferring the totality of your sins into that lamp. And so you are free. So there is need to understand the principle of identification with Christ. You know, identifying with Christ. You see, when you identify with Christ, eh, first of all, who is Christ? Christ came from the bosom of the Father and came into the womb of a virgin so as to be born as a man and in being born as a man he became a son of man that you might become a son of god so why did why was christ born as a man why was he born into humanity it is so that you can be born into divinity Christ took on the garment of humanity so that you can be clothed with divinity. Is that making sense? And so that is why we have this, this, you cannot afford to look outside of Christ because Christ came to become you so that you can become him. In other words, let me put it this way. God supernaturally brought Christ into the realm of humanity. So Christ became man. Christ became man. God incarnate in the flesh. God 
caused Christ to become man. He came in the form, listen to me very carefully, I know where I'm going. He came in the form of sinful flesh. And in coming in the form of sinful flesh, on the cross, on the cross, that was where he now took your place. How did he take your place? He took your sin. The totality of your sin was laid upon him. So he became sin for you. For what reason? So that you can become his righteousness. He became a curse for you. So that you can become blessed of his own blessings. That is why. Because if this is the whole essence of Christ coming to this world. So that God the Father can identify Robert and you in his son Jesus. Never you take away your attention from him. Because this Jesus is who I am. He is who I am. And the more I, I look at him, the more I engage with that word that Jesus used. One thing is needful. The more I find myself in that, one thing is useful. The less stress life becomes. We, you know, I love us to get into that what they call the the mode of divine orchestrations, where we're beneficiaries of divine orchestrations. But it cannot happen except you learn to sit still like Mary at the feet of Jesus. And what was Mary doing? She was engaging Jesus with her eyes, with her ears, with her heart. All that he was saying, she was hearing, she was looking at him, and she was engaging with him with her heart. And Jesus said, one thing is needful. If you miss out on this one thing is needful, you will still have a lot of cares on resolve. You'll be, there's no need carrying cares in your heart. There's just no need. Just no need carrying cares in your heart because cares, carrying cares in your heart is just going to cause your hearts to be troubled. And that's why, you know, the Bible says, Bible says we should look unto Jesus. Keep looking unto Jesus. Why? Because he is the author and the finisher of your faith. And you know what Bible says? It says, let me read the scripture. That scripture says that if you don't want to be to be uh, to faint, to be weary and faint in your mind, then you have to consider this Jesus. Consider him because he's your perfection. He's everything unto you. Listen. The whole essence of Jesus being born as a man is so that God can righteously, justifiably, identify you and me in his son Jesus if you understand this thing I've said you will be extricated from self consciousness every word I'm speaking to you please note it a man who is still steeped in self consciousness will be denied confidence will be robbed of intimacy with god and will be deprived of rest in the soul and peace might elude him as long as you are still looking at self these problems will arise paul had the problem Paul said that when he kept referring to I, I, he said, I know that no good thing dwells in this flesh of mine. I want to do good, but I find myself doing evil. I don't want to do evil, 
but I find myself doing good. No, I, I don't want to do evil, but I find myself doing that thing I don't want to do. The thing I want to do, I find that I cannot do it. That is self. So he's looking at, he's seeing the shortfalls and the shortcomings and the weaknesses and the imperfections in himself. On the he shouted, who shall deliver this wretched person that I am? And he also responded by the Spirit, it is Christ. So listen to me. We have to come to the point where we don't see ourselves for what we are and our imperfections, but we realize and recognize that God does not judge us outside of Christ. God sees you in Christ. And if you are in Christ, listen to me carefully, and you are in Christ, you will never be judged. Instead, you will be justified. You are justified and you are not going to be judged. You cannot be condemned. You are justified. If you are in Christ, you just note that you are already affirmed. God has affirmed you and validated you. So you are not struggling to please God. But you know that already you are pleased with God and it's from that perspective that you live life. You are appropriating the blessings of God. If you are in Christ, know that you are already accepted. God has already accepted you in Christ. You are not trying to get him to accept you. If you are in Christ, you are already blessed and you are highly favored just by being in Christ. In Christ, I want you to recognize, listen to me, every privilege of Christ, every position of Christ, every possession of Christ belongs to you. Your, your own privilege, your own position is the same as it is in Christ. Um, and um, your, uh, your access to God the Father, your privilege in Christ, your position in Christ, they are all secure in Christ. In other words, it's not fluctuating. There's no fluct... See, let me put it this way. If you are trying to secure your position before God by your own strength, by the works of the flesh, it fluctuates because today you might be good tomorrow, you may not be good. But when you recognize that, oh, hold on, hold on, my position before God is the same position that Christ has before God. The favor I have before God is because I am in Christ and not because of anything else. So when you think this way, there's stability. There's no fluctuation. There's no uncertainty. I, I, I don't know, is this making sense? You are secure and stable when you recognize that the privileges you have, the position you have, the possessions you have, the access you have, the acceptance you have is in Christ. Then that makes for stability and assurance. Your favorable standing before God is in Christ. It, and that favorable standing, it's fixed. It's not variable. It's not um, seasonal. It is eternally guaranteed. So that should bring a, a stability in your soul. I don't want us to rely on our circumstances or rely on your feelings to affect your perspective and perception of who you are in Christ. Your feelings is, is, has nothing whatsoever to do with your standing, your favorable standing before God. See, you have Christ as your rock. You know, when you talk about rock, rocks seems to connote some kind of stability and some kind of uh, uh, impregnable protection. So Jesus is your rock. There's no shaking. There is no basis to be worried. 
there's no basis for anxiety and there's no basis for fear when you are Christ conscious. Now, I want us to recognize that this Jesus that we are talking about, he's the safest positioning for you and for me. Your physical circumstance or your physical situation is not reality. That's not your reality. That thing you're hearing or that thing you're seeing is not your reality. They are mirages. And believe me, as long as they are communicated to you by your senses, they are likely mirages. Christ is, I hear my word, Christ is your absolute reality. What did I say? Christ is your absolute reality. Even though your circumstance may be diametrically opposed to what Christ is, because you are what Christ is, even if your circumstance, your situation, and your feeling is directly opposite to what Christ is, don't let that affect your perspective. Don't let that affect your perception of your real standing before God or your favorable standing before God. Why do I say this? There's a scripture that says Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. He's, he does not change. So listen to me. In Christ, you are not your flesh. You are what Christ is. Bible says, as Christ is, so are even this moment in this world. That is why, listen to me, that is why I am insisting that you are to perpetually look at Jesus, looking unto him. Bible says, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, so that you are not wearied and you don't faint in your mind. Let me see, what is this? Okay, so Heather wants to say something, but just give me a minute, Heather. So, I want each and every one of us to give Christ a place of preeminence and prominence in our midst. Jesus, by the grace of God, this Jesus I am talking to you about, I'm sounding like a broken record, but it doesn't matter. I want Jesus to be central to our gathering, our focus, and our study. He's going to be the centrality of our, in fact, he is the centrality of our message and our proclamation. This Jesus, by the grace of God, he'll be the pillar of our worship the pillar of our worship when listen if we all collectively and individually we engage with jesus as a central part of our mind our being our family our everything listen to me i repeat this with boldness great things will start happening to you great things will start happening to you let, let, let's give let's let, let me give an example. Let's say you have two children. One of the children is constantly banging on the door of heaven, banging on the door of heaven, and that child has not made Christ the centrality of his worship. He will struggle. He will struggle. There are certain things you ought to get from your father in heaven even without praying. <laughs> you, you doubt, yeah, are you doubting me? Let me ask you a question. When you were a child, all the care you received from your father and your mother, did you ask for them? There are certain things you desire, you ask your parents, daddy, I want this, mommy, I want this. They give it to you. Fine, beautiful. But every, everything that your father or your mother gave to you, all the care, the feeding, the clothing, you know, the bathing, watching over you, you know, just keeping an eye over you. Did you ask for this? No, you didn't ask. It was just something you were entitled to because you are a son or you're a daughter, because you're an heir. 
When you make Christ the centrality of your being, that is how it will be. There are many things you will not have to ask for. They are just put in place. Am I making sense? They are just put in place. God, he just, as your father, he will keep arranging things. Far beyond your ability to arrange. Far beyond your wisdom to arrange. This thing sounds too simplistic, but trust me, it is fully tested. It's the truth. As I'm speaking to you now, and as you're listening to me, God is even confirming his words with signs following. With signs following. Because what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to tell you one thing that is needful. I'm trying to en encourage you in that one thing that is needful. Christ will confirm his word that engaging with him is that one vital thing that is needful that will deliver you from being careful and troubled about many things. So I've told you one child who has unconsciously, you know, unwittingly neglected Christ as being the centrality of his worship, of his focus, and of his study. I said he will struggle. It will be as if everything he needs to get in this life has to be through a lot of hardship, a lot of fasting, a lot of praying. It's not so with a father and a child. It shouldn't be so. But that is what you see amongst many Christians. Where they have, when they have to get something, oh, it's a lot of labor. I have to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. It's not supposed to be so. It's not supposed to be so. Another child who is consistently engaged with Christ as his daily manner. He just receives blessings and things are added to his life. Church, that is our goal. I'm praying that God will give you that revelation. Where things are added to your life. Not you going pursuing for things. He says, <laughs> the Gentiles seek after these things. But he says, your father knows that you have need for these things. And he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. These things will be added. You don't need to go and start pursuing them. Please, have you heard of alcoholics? Uh, do you know an alcoholic? An alcoholic is someone who is giving his life to alcohol. Have you heard of workaholics? Workaholics are people who have given their whole life to working. Have you heard of laborholics? <laughs> Laborholics. Laborholics are people who have given their lives to labor and labor and labor. They are under a compulsive drive through obsessive desire to achieve things and to possess things. Some people, all that they know in this world, all that they are preoccupied with, Work, 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 work. They see different ways. It's called the way of grace. And the way of this grace is that one thing that is needful. If we are going to do, we're going to, from today, we are continuing our daily broadcast. And if you are that child that has made Jesus his daily manner, you know what I mean by manner? Manna is the food that the Israelites ate in the wilderness. They ate that food in the wilderness. And for the 38 years in the wilderness, nobody was sick. Nobody grew weary. Nobody was weak. Do you know what? 
it got to a time when they said, please, 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 we're tired of this manner. We're tired of this manner. Do you know that manner is a type of Christ? Manner typifies Christ. It got to a stage where this Israelite said, please, I beg you, Moses, we are tired of this manner. Please, please, please give us something else. You know what happened? That was the time serpents came into their midst when they disregarded manna. What do serpents symbolize? Serpents come to think how with your, with your life, they sting, they bite, and they can kill. So they lost their protection, they lost their peace, they lost their health, and some of them lost their lives. That act of despising manna and looking for something else is symbolic to ignoring Christ, the centrality of the message of the gospel, and going for shadow and things that do not give. Listen to me. It's not what every man of God preaches that is manna. Any preaching, any teaching that relegates Christ, it might motivate you, it might inspire you, but the truth of the matter is that what actually constitutes life and what will build your faith, Bible calls it word of Christos, word of Christ. So we will for the next couple of weeks as we're meeting on a daily basis, I want to encourage you be like Mary. You know, I won't tell you lies. We can go and start doing, oh, let that, 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 let that, that. See, many of you are saying, oh, why are we not praying for children? Why are we not praying for this? Why are we not praying for Listen to me carefully. This strategy is the best strategy. Just focus on Jesus. Just focus, feed on Jesus. You'll be surprised all those things that you are caring about, your children, your health, your marriage, it will just be wonderfully resolved. Is Sister Irina on this? Sister Irina, is she on this call? Is she on this platform? Uh, she, went, she went hiking. She's she went not hiking. around. Okay. Yes. Praise um, God. So, Sister Irina, how many of you had a testimony? How many of you had? What did she do? What did she do? Did she embark on a 90-day fast? No. I'm not, saying it's, I'm not saying fasting is wrong. Just understand me clearly. When it is time to fast, it is time to fast. But we are not fasting. I hope you know. I'm not fasting because I want to get divine help from God. No. I'm not fasting because I'm trying to twist God, God's hand, to, or, or try to make a reluctant God to give me a blessing. Never. Far be Far be it from us. But Sister Irina was sitting down here. I don't know when she started with this platform. But one thing I recognized that she was quite regular in attending the sessions. And all the sessions, what were we talking about? It was simply Christ. It was simply Christ. And what happened? She just woke up one morning and discovered that she had been healed. Losing her inhaler or nose drops or whatever. And it's called that she had been healed. Listen to me. Eh? Some I may pray, I may not pray. But one thing is sure is we're being led by the Spirit. I will keep opening up layers and layers and layers of Christ for you. Don't think it is boring manner. Don't think so. Because it is powerful nourishment that can send you through the wilderness and keep away the serpents and keep you in perfect. You know what? You know the real name of man of what that manna is. I know um, some translations call it angel's food, but in the real Hebrew translation, it's not angel's food. It's called champion's food. It's champion. It is a food that you eat and you are a champion. In other words, nothing, nothing can ever defeat you. It makes you a champion. And you know what? What we are eating here 
is champion's food. It's manna, manna of Christ. Is the word of yes, God. Amen. What? And I guarantee you, you cannot have this nourishment day in, day out, day in, on a daily basis and remain the same. You cannot be, remain a defeated person just hearing this. I don't mean that you, I, I, I'm not even saying, oh, you tune into the platform and you're just, you're, you're just saying, oh, I'm waiting for Pastor Robert to pray when he pray there, I, then I, I collect or waiting for communion. No, no, no. Listen to these words we are speaking. If it is possible, after a session, go back, connect where, wherever, if it is on Facebook or on YouTube, go and listen to it again. Listen, meditate on it. It is manna. What we are doing, Jesus, these are the words of Jesus. One thing is needful. It is time for you to be delivered from all those cares in your heart. It is time for you to be delivered from a troubled heart. Why are these issues persisting and persisting? The time, listen to me, forget about those issues. Just focus on this Jesus. Who is this Jesus to me? Who is he to me? Who is he to me? What is he doing now? He is my high priest. What is the, you know I've told you, historical Jesus. Thank God for that. He became God incarnate in the flesh. He took my sins. He bore my sins. He became a curse for me. He redeemed from the curse of the Lord. He suffered for me. He was chastised for my peace and all that. Thank God for that. He died. Thank God for that. He was risen from the dead for my justification. Thank God for that. But what is he doing now? What about the current Jesus? Seated at the right hand of God the Father. As my high priest. Do you understand what the role of the high priest is? Do you understand? Do you know that your high priest represents you? Do you know that the way God sees your high priest is exactly how he sees you? Do you know that in the scriptures, God spent so many time, so much chapters in the Bible describing the garment of the high priest? Why? Because God wants you to study it for you to understand what is what the, some some hidden truths about what the high priest means and what he represents and when you understand the high priest and understand the role he's carrying and understand his garment it will help you in comprehending your own identity in him because if we can identify with christ you will no longer be self-conscious. You become fully Christ-conscious. Hallelujah. Have I inspired you? It was really awesome. Awesome message today. Wonderful. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Heather. Hi, Pastor Robert. Thank you for that word. Wow, um, I just felt impressed as you were speaking, just uh, some, some things really deeply impressed me. So uh, basically when you said that um, we're validated by God and we're affirmed by him in yeah. Christ, through, through Christ, and with, therefore we're not struggling to please God that can be something that in our heart of hearts because of lack of affirmation, um, when we finally have the revelation that God loves us, just I, I guess like a newborn baby that's welcomed into a family, that it's almost like that child can do no wrong, isn't it? Yeah, and right. uh, what a great weight off our shoulders. Yeah, that's right. What a great weight to know that we're affirmed. And I think sorry, of sorry, my- sorry, sorry, let me interrupt you, sorry. There's a statement you made, which is so powerful, I don't want us to overlook it. A new child born into a family. Did you hear what Heather said? It is as if that child can do no wrong. There's nothing you as the mother or the father will say and say, what? This is, just imagine, can that child, what wrong do you think that that child can do? A new baby, a newborn child. What wrong? As I ask you, what wrong do you think that child can do 
to the point of incurring the mother's displeasure or the mother's wrath. How many of you mothers who have been carrying children and that child just keeps crying and deprives you of sleep for the entire night and the following morning you are still dotting over that child? Has any mother gotten so angry and said, you know what, you this child, you are such a foolish child. Why will you not allow your mother to sleep? Who, which, which mother will ever say such a thing? You know what? Heather says, if you catch this revelation, it's a heavy weight lifted of you, that it is impossible for me to displease my father in Christ to the point where he rebukes me. No. I'm not, you are, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. If you catch this revelation, what you are going to do, why you are coming to this platform is not because you are trying to please God. Mm -mm. You're already pleased. God is already pleased with you. So you're coming to this platform to discover more of your privileges, to discover more of your inheritance. We're not coming because we want to please God. I'm not signing on or because I want to please Pastor Robert. No, so Pastor Robert said I was. No, 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 no. That's the wrong perspective. You're coming in here because the more we see Christ, the more you see your privilege, your position, your possessions, and your protection. In Christ. Everything that belongs to you is in Christ. Why? You have unlimited, un, unlimited, limitless access to all these things. Why? Because you are in Christ, and Christ is your high priest. Go ahead, Heather. Yes, so um, obviously we are born again through confessing with our mouths that we believe Jesus was the Son of God and that he was raised from the dead and believing in our hearts um, and asking him to come and forgive us and be our Lord and Savior and living for him. And therefore we're born in Ephesians um, 1, I believe, talks about us being adopted into God's family. And, um, and you've explained, you know, obviously it's through Christ. And I was just thinking, and I've just written things down, like um, basically God pretty much wants to bless us as as a, as a parent with a child, wants to, a loving parent, wants to withhold nothing good from their children. And I was thinking that Jesus, by dying and, and representing the Father, and as we know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one, that Jesus paid the price so that he's provided God the Father with other children. And um, so we have privilege and access, and we are secure in Christ. We can, you know, he says, come boldly before his throne of grace. Um, and really, I'm thinking of Peter when um, Peter, obviously, in his flesh, denied Christ in front of a, a servant girl, and yet, Jesus knew his heart, and when it came to Jesus being resurrected and speaking to the disciples, he called Peter, didn't he, on the beach? And he said three times to Peter, um, Peter, Peter, do you love me? And it was almost like he was counteracting the three denials that he'd made previously before Jesus had died. And of course, Peter was deeply upset. And when he was asked the third time by Jesus, you know, Peter, do you love me? And he said, oh, you know, he was so chagrined. And he said, you know that I love you. Um, and uh, and remember, Jesus said, Peter, upon your the rock of your understanding that I am the son of God, the revelation, I will build my church. And he said, I have prayed for you that your faith will not give up. The devil has wanted to sift you like wheat, but I've prayed that your faith will not fail you. And um, I've come to understand that faith our faith is is the precious thing that we have to preserve until our dying moment. And faith in what? In believing that God does care. And that um, I've, I've come to understand that many, many people, including my parents, um, didn't have the perfect family upbringing. They didn't know their parents. They didn't have a father. They weren't brought up by a loving father. They didn't have parents for them they were brought up by you know people that weren't their true father for example and there are many people that 
have been brought up not by a loving parent, let alone loving father. So they may have not been affirmed in their life. They have low self-worth, lack of affirmation. And my father was one of those. You know, he um, he didn't know his his dad. He wasn't brought up by his dad. And um, but he had a faith, and he held on to his dying day um, the fact that the Word of God and the Holy Spirit were like a surrogate father to him. And it only occurred to me the other day as I was telling this testimony to um, to somebody at my church. And it suddenly occurred to me that my dad, it was like because he didn't have a father to affirm him, by revelation of obviously the fact that he had a heavenly daddy, Abba Father, through the word of God, he would cling on to God's word and the Holy Spirit that obviously brings to life the word as, as though that was all he had. That was like his father to him. And when you don't know what it is, to have a loving earthly father, where are you going to get that affirmation from? Mm, I see. Mm, 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 mm. That is why, that is why we need to persistently, diligently let people know that we have unconditional affirmation, acceptance, validation in the person of Christ. I'm going to share more of this. I'm going to share more of this, but let me just in details, maybe from tomorrow, but uh, Heather, what you're saying, it just shows me the kind of impact this gospel can have. Do you know, have you ever read to, to st attempted to study the details of the garment of the high priest? One of the pieces of the garment of the high priest is called what is called the breastplate of judgment. That piece is placed on the chest around here. It's a square a cloth piece that is folded into two. And on that piece, you have three rows of gemstones, four, four, four. On each gemstone is written the name of each of these tribes of Israel. And you know what the Bible says? It says, Aaron the high priest, when he puts on the garment of the high priest and has that breastplate piece he enters into the holy of holies and that he's meant to bear 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 b-e-a-r the names of the israelites in those gemstones in his heart before the lord as a memorial that tells me that if you are a child of god God regards you as a special jewel, a gemstone in his heart. Listen, if you go and read about those gemstones, some of them, one of them is diamond, amethyst, um, all kinds of gemstones. And at least the one I know, I don't know all these gemstones, but at least the one I know is diamond. And I know how expensive diamond can be. And if God has inscribed their names in these gemstones, it shows you how validated we are in the heart of our high priest. We can't preach it enough. Why can we not? Because on a daily basis, you are receiving condemnatory speakings even from your parents even from your spouse even from people that work people in your workplace your people you interact with at every point in time there is one kind of negative speakings that comes against us 
header says, her father has no other source of unconditional validation and affirmation in this world apart from the word. And I can tell you that a lot of homes are broken. In other words, man and woman have splits. So the children have not had the opportunity to receive the kind of solid, rock solid validation and affirmation. As a result of that, your default nature is to seek for validation, seek for affirmation, seek for you know, um, acceptance. And in the course of doing this, you find that you are like on a treadmill of living. Never ever coming to a destination where you know, hold on. Ah, so somebody actually regards me as a gemstone. Somebody, God sees me like a diamond. I'm like a diamond in his heart. What have I done to look like a diamond? That is what the devil will ask you. What have I done to be like a gemstone? That is what your mind will ask you. And that is why what we seek to do is to take your attention from yourself and make you to concertedly focus on the one who has proclaimed you a gemstone in his heart. And if you can see it and get to the point where you completely and totally believe it, that's where transformation takes place. Your battle, your battle, you are battling between what the world is telling you, what your circumstances are telling you, what your feelings are telling you, as against what your high priest has said concerning you. It's not only just in the heart. On the shoulders, there are two onyx stones. One here, one here. On these onyx stones, one on the right, six names of the six tribes of Israel is engraved. The Bible says engraved, not with ink, it's engravement. On one onyx stone, and the other six tribes inscribed on the other onyx stone. This onyx stone is is held with a golden ouch. And that's what holds the, the effort, the effort that the high priest wears. Why is God engraving the names of all the tribes of Israel on those onyx stones? It shows that, listen, I don't just affirm you as gemstones, I am also sustaining you. I am the one carrying you on my shoulders. And the high priest is meant to have those stones with the effort and enter into the holy place, holy of holies, with those stones and their names engraved. In other words, God is saying that your name is eternally engraved upon the special stone and I'm bearing you on my shoulder and you will remain eternally sustained by me. Oh, listen. When you understand this type of things, eh, it's supposed to give you a lot of confidence and assurance with which to proceed through the challenges of this world. This world, the Bible says, it lieth in wickedness. And the only kind of um, champion that can come through in this wicked world is the one God has validated, the one God has affirmed, and the one God has, you know, brought what I call blessed assurance into their soul. So I look at myself, any time I think about the garment of the high priest and I recollect that God has, the high priest presents me as a gemstone before the father. That excites me. It begins to dawn on me, hold on, hold on. Robert, you are not ordinary. Never allow yourself to be deceived by the devil or by your circumstances. 
Joseph was in the prison, but he was not ordinary. He wasn't ordinary. There were prisoners in that prison. But that man, Joseph, had some destiny about him that the prison could not contain. When the right time came, he was flung out of the prison, from the prison to the palace. Just David was not ordinary. He was in the backside looking after the flock of his father. But he was not ordinary. Something about, listen to me, you are a gemstone. Where do we get validation? From the word of Christ. You are in him. Let's take out our communion elements. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a marvelous privilege. What a marvelous privilege. Don't think. Don't think. You are wasting your time listening to the word on Christ. See, do you know, this is, we have been, we started this session at past 12. It's almost 2.30. In this period, in this period, Miracles have already taken place. And before the end of today, you might just receive a phone call. Or you might receive a text. Or an email. Or a notification. Something you have been worried for in the last five years. In the last ten years. In the last fifteen years. Has suddenly been resolved effortlessly. That is what I call being a beneficiary of divine orchestrations. Mm. There's a scripture that talks about, I don't know that scripture, but it talks about, it says, when you cast the lots, you know, when you cast the lots, the man cast the lot, but the disposing of that lot is controlled by God. There's not, for you, there's nothing again like coincidence. There's nothing like chance. There's somebody that rules over chance, and that's God. And when you come under his rulership, it's no longer coincidence, it's now providence. I'm a child of providence, I'm not a child of coincidence. I know it. There's nothing that happens to me haphazardly, nothing. It doesn't matter, I could be making a mistake. I could be getting into a, a, a wrong partnership. I could be going astray. I could be trying to even please men outside of God's agenda. <laughs> Guess what? It won't work because the sovereign power of God will stop me. That's right. He will stop. I, I know it. I know it. He's my shepherd. He's my father. He's my carer. Oh, Thank Proverbs you. 16, 33. Please read it for us. Please read it for us, please. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of Jehovah. That is your God. They can cast lots however they want. Uh, manipulations, all kinds of schemings, craftings, and all that. Do worry yourself. Do one thing it needs to just focus on Jesus. Don't worry yourself. The final outcome must eventually benefit you and be in accordance with God's will. Providence. Providence. Hey, I talk about Aria Katuria. When I learned of providence, I knew that huh, I'm safe and secure. Look at what the Bible says. I think it's Isaiah 45. God is talking. Oh, Rabbi Hande. You know what he said? He said, oh, you heavens, drop down. All you have is drop down. In the message it says, you clouds, pour out buckets of goodness. Pour out buckets of the goodness of God. The message says, earth, open up and begin to blossom and bloom with salvation. This is Jehovah. That's my God. 
He has control over the heavens. He has control over the earth. What should I be afraid of? Devil comes and throws it, throws something at you, and then you start getting flustered and worried. No. Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. How can master is in your house? You are careful. Why are you trying? How can <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You are trying to serve the master. No, 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 no. It's spiritual pride. Sit still at his feet. See, sister, read that Isaiah 45 for me. Sit still at his feet and suck. Just keep feeding. Keep receiving. That's what Jesus loves. A breastfeeding mother, a breastfeeding mother is excited and happy and fulfilled once the child is sucking and sucking and sucking and sucking. If the child doesn't suck, suck that milk, there's no fulfillment for the mother. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus wants you to do. Just keep sucking, keep sucking, keep sucking. And then he's happy when he sees you being transformed, when he sees you blossoming, when he sees you flourishing. Please read that scripture for us. You heavens above, rain down my righteousness. Let the clouds shower it down. Let the earth open wide. Let salvation spring up. Let righteousness flourish with it. I, the Lord, have created it. Case closed. Case closed. When you read these two scriptures, Proverbs 16, 33, Isaiah 45, verse 8, and you know that you, you are perfectly validated, affirmed, accepted, highly favored, and blessed in Christ. Why will you ever go, why will you complain that Robert, I can't sleep at night? Why will you complain that, oh, even if I sleep, I just have three hours sleep, and throughout the night I'm tossing, because I have cares in my heart. Go back to the daily manner of Christ. That's what we're going to be doing from tomorrow. So I'm here to announce to you, our daily broadcast resumes from tomorrow. The body of Christ, broken for you and broken for me. He was bruised for my iniquities. He became me on that cross. He took my sins and my curse. He was rejected so that I be accepted. He was poor so that I become rich. Bible says he was bound. The captain and the um, Jewish officers that came to Jesus, the Bible says they, that captain bound him. When high priest Ananias was sending him to Caiaphas, they also kept him bound. Why was Jesus bound? So that I can be free. No more bondage in your life and in my life. As we focus on Christ, who died in our stead, took our sins. Chastisement required for your shalom, for your iron, for your peace, was meted out upon him so I can have peace. As we partake of his broken body, I prophesy to you a multiplication of peace unto your life. A multiplication of the unlimited, undeserving resources of God in your life. Let us eat. Guess what? The body of Christ is yummy. <laughs> it's yummy. It's yummy to my spiritual taste buds. And it should be yummy to your spiritual taste buds. It's the cup of the new and everlasting testament. You know what I'm hearing? You know what I can hear? <laughs> In the ear of my spirit. Miracles, miracles, miracles. Can you use your right hand and just receive I mentioned it three times. Receive it. Christ. 
Say, I receive the miracles at work in this hour, in this moment. Say, I receive the miracles at work in this moment. Listen to me. A miracle is something that does not happen naturally. A miracle is like walking on water. So say, I receive miracles. Three, three miracles. Say, it. I receive it by faith. I connect to the prophetic and I receive these miracles that Christ is working out or arranging around me right now in Jesus' name. This is the cup of the new and the everlasting testament. Sealed with the blood of Jesus. Shed for the remission of your sins. The blood of Jesus by which you and I are perpetually, eternally justified. Let us drink. Now, what I can hear in my spirit is, we are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my God. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my God. We are saying thank you, thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Thank you, my God. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my God. We are saying thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, my God. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you my Lord. You know, why you're God? you know why you're thanking him? He has done great, great, great things. Great things. In our one more time. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done definitely recipients amen of supernatural workings and i don't say amen <laughs> please be alert supernatural workings are being brought to bear in your space amen what i mean is that thing that will look naturally impossible because you have heard the word of christ You've given this time to hear the word of Christ. This word is going into manifestations, going to work to establish supernatural manifestations around you. Rejoice, rejoice. God bless you all. Take out your offerings and give your offerings to the Lord and the Lord continue to bless us. We meet again with tomorrow at 7 and we'll just keep meeting like that as the Lord leads us. I hope Everything you... is turning around. Hallelujah. Turning around, turning around for our good. Hallelujah. Everything turning around. around. Everything turning, turning around. around. Everything turning, turning around. around for our good. Amen. Yeah, Let's give a clap offering to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't want we don't want it to end. <laughs> well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Pastor Robert. There, there, there's something beautiful about hearing the gospel. When you hear another thing, it, it becomes so irritating. Because you just want to hear Christ. You just want to hear, you know, when you hear um, other messages, 
you know, you, you can't, you can't, it can't get in at all. That's right. You just, it will just bring another atmosphere into your heart. Right. But when you hear Christ, believe me, it just, I don't know, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. It's so beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. When you eat a lovely mm -hmm. meal, you don't want to It's so meal. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Nonsense meal. Once you eat a lovely meal, you want to mm. It is uh, it is five star meal. We don't go to McDonald's now. <laughs> <laughs> no basis for comparison. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Robert. Pastor Robert, yes. you remember a, a, a certain lady that was uh, diagnosed years ago with a breast cancer that I don't want oh, to mention sure the yeah. name. Oh, yeah. That they, they wanted to cut off one of her breasts. You know, you will know it through what I'm saying. So and then uh, when uh, we. She first came and told the, uh, uh, my husband and said, you know, we have to, you know, like that pressure, it's like you have, we have to do more prayer. We have to, and then first my husband we call, told we called you, huh? we called Yeah, we called him. My husband told her that the power is in this message. Calm down. The power is in this message. But there was another so, thing. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry for interrupting, but the first thing that you said, Pastor Robert, bring Holy Communion. communion yes. <laughs> then we called you on phone. And we explained it. She was under that pressure of uh, the doctor calling her from another country where she has to go and start this process of cutting and everything. But there is something about this message. And then uh, we called you. You did Holy Communion. It was just looked simple over the phone. And then uh, there was something. She came also to our home. We told her that the power is in this message. So but to cut this short, this person is serving the Lord today you know, effective in the kingdom, completely healed, bringing souls to Christ and just preaching the gospel, sponsoring ministries and doing so. Oh, it is many years ago. Mm. So, and establishing more in this gospel. So the power is in this gospel. Mm. The mm. power is in this gospel. It's so powerful. Mm. It's just one testimony I just threw out. It's so much about this gospel. Mm. So we need to hear it and hear it and hear it. It's something you said about it. You said, um, you know, people are expecting when you, there must be big prayer today, you know, the few. But that word you are hearing, that is life. The more you just hear it, life comes to you. Mm. The more you hear it, life just comes to you. The more you hear it about Christ, the more, you know, ease comes to you. You know, you it, it's it's so powerful. And it's, uh, like I always say that people who are graced, they are the one who are hearing this message. It can be Christian for many years, but, you know, so I know why I'm saying this, Pastor Robert. I know why I'm saying this. So I got, uh, also my, my one of my other brother is also an evangelist. And actually he he is very, very, you know, he's a, uh, very very god fearing and love god so much so i know that the message is he hasn't got this message really but i've been praying but the point is that whenever they have a program with all these beautiful hearts he always forward me when i listen to before i listen to the last two take one two three pre uh, uh, preaching the word i just quickly pause i just can't i just can't continue but i will tell him thank you so much brother thank you you know because he's the editor to me and I cannot, you will hear somebody telling you that the much more you are giving, much is expected. And if you are high in the kingdom of God and you do anything, God whip you, he'll whip you 20. <laughs> the one that, the one that just got to Christ today, if you do any mistake, God will whip you. You know, you want to hear those messages and they want without that bring you to bring you to, what have I done? So me, you know, it's before you, I just started listening to one, two, three. I say, oh my God, look at what people are feeding on. I just heard the man of God said, you, you have been born again for 15 years. It's not the same as born again one year. If you do too much, they weep. Hey. <laughs> so <laughs> imagine somebody went to a program and listened to all those things and come back home and begin to think of the whip. God is about how many whip am I going to get? <laughs> so what should they do? And we are just so blessed and privileged. We are so blessed. We are blessed. Yes, yes. Good news. It's actually good news. And it's true. Yes, and yes. But it's true. Glory to God. And uh, I really trust the Lord. This plat platform will grow. It will really grow. Because this is manna. And people should start eating manna. Mm. And stopping eating things. The Bible says in, in uh, I, where is it now again? In Isaiah 55. It said, why, why are you eating all this funny bread? Which doesn't feed you. 
Just eat the bread of life for free. I said, what, why are you buying stuff which doesn't satisfy? Come and buy for free. Wow. It is so beautiful. It's, it's just an, an, a call for the gospel that you should receive the right feeling. And we are fed right here on this platform. So I declare in the name of Jesus that this platform will have greater impact. Many more people will, will join this platform and they will hear the gospel. They will profit of this good manner. They will Amen. eat and they shall be fed aright. And every food which is given out, which is dished out, which is not of God, which is not of this manner, which is not the gospel. I declare these, these voices shall, they, they shall shift, they shall change. Shall they, 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 they shall get the revelation of Christ, the word of Christos. They shall preach the word of Christ. They shall preach the gospel, the good news. They shall dish out the good food, the good food, which is the word of Christ. That is what I declare in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, Pastor Robert, I just I round up one little testimony. I forwarded your um, realizing, I think, the redemption. I forwarded it to my kid brother in Germany. I told you, you know him, actually. I forwarded it to him. And then uh, normally he would not, you know, he has his own ministry he goes to and all this. So, but anyway, he replied. And then he told me that, Mm, I think I'm starting to understand this grace gospel, and it, it's so, it's so. He said, <laughs> it just, he said, it make, it make you happy. <laughs> he, he just replied me. He said, I think it, it really make you happy. So that is the first statement he made. So I just said, thank you, Father. So, but the point is that uh, you know the testimony he he got about uh, getting a contract before the COVID, and then he never started the job, and he's been receiving for the past one year. So after just hearing from my husband a word of the gospel, three days later, they gave him a contract and a job. So the point is that the, sometimes they can still see this miracle of this gospel, but they, they are still afraid to move out of, they will think, ah, this gospel is too, is too, you know, I don't know what they think about they, it. They, they are afraid of diabetes, it's too sweet. So they, <laughs> they, they want some bitter stuff. <laughs> so, but anyway. Um, they think that it is, too good to be true. Mm -hmm. I know a sister who had been worshiping in a church where there was such, 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 such heavy condemnatory preachings. And she came to the church. She heard the first message. She came the second time. She came the third time. And then one day she walked up to me. And if you see her, she's, um, she's bent over like this. That's She's not old, but she has kind of, as if there's a weight she's carrying. And then she looked at me and she said, Pastor, let me tell you her words. Everything here appears so perfect and so wonderful. The message is so awesome. But I feel that I'm not worthy. I don't feel I'm worthy to be here. How, how, how do you mean? I feel it's just too good for me. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. It's not too good for you. It is actually for you. So for her, she's never seen, you see what your brother said there, this thing makes me happy. So mm -hmm. it's, it's taking away the burden of condemnation, which you can see her, is the way she is, she's like that. So it's lifting up for her. She comes, it's so sweet, it's so but. The devil is trying to deceive again. That, no, no, no. This is too advanced for you. This is not. You don't want to be here. Please go back to where you're coming from. So if that kind of thing, the devil puts a lot of thoughts into their mind, and they are quite hesitant in accepting the good. It's just like somebody comes to you now and says, "You know what? I have a house for you, five hundred thousand pound house. Take it free." Eh? How? What? What? What is the catch? What is it? No catch. Not catching it, but I can tell you that when you receive such m mighty gifts like that, some people don't have the guts to receive it. They are still in doubt. They are still intimidated by the awesome. How can God be telling you that you are in the order of a gemstone? 
in, as far as it's concerned, you are like a gemstone in, in his eyes. And so, just have to imagine it. It's quite difficult for many people to uh, accept it. And truly speaking, the promises in this gospel, they are just mind-blowing. They are so mind-blowing for anyone to receive it and accept it overnight. Yeah, it's actually sometimes it's actually intimidating, all this goodness, because we we are our default mindset as human beings is performance oriented. I have earned it, so it's my right to receive it. But once you're here, it's not you can't earn this thing. You can only receive it with gratitude through Christ. So that is something many people are a little bit intimidated by it. Because if they receive it, they have a feel of unrighteousness because this is too big for me. I don't deserve it. But they don't get the catch of the gospel. It's not about you deserving anything. It's about Christ who has deserved it for you. And you receive it by faith. And that is, that is the, the, the beauty of the gospel. It's that you receive everything. You receive the Holy Spirit. You receive the, the full blessings of God based on only one merit, the merit of Christ. And when you hear this, it makes you just love God. Yes, Believe me, I don't, I don't know how people who have not grasped this message of the I don't know how they God. can love God. It's not a joke. It's just like, you know, they can't love God. Because I always tell them, first of all, they, they don't have the assurance of their salvation. That is the most beautiful, the foundation. You know, they, if they are, they are, they can't love you. Can't I always tell people, can you love a God you don't know tomorrow? He will put you, he will throw you in the hell, hellfire. You want to tell me you love that God? You don't know where you belong, but you, you, you they can't love God. Believe me. So they, 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 mm. they fear God, and they are kind of, of as you said, mechanizing the, the, their love for God. They just say it's my duty to love God. No love. Sense of duty, and not out of. Out of, out of actual law mm. and sometimes and they can that find remind me of a brother who said it's love by force <laughs> no love is not by force love is is just a, a natural response to the goodness of a person yeah and if you hear the gospel one two yeah. three times you do nothing but to it will just your heart will just melt away you just want to respond you see the thing driving is it driving for you just feel you know you just feel like Oh my God, is this the more you are knowing more about these things that Christ has done for you, the more you just feel oh my God, overwhelmed with this God, and the, the more your love just begins to go deep and deep and deep. Do you know if, if people are not, if we are not settled in this, if we don't understand this, do you know we can even come to some people come to a point of saying, God, you are not you, you are not right. I did this, I did this, I did it. Why didn't I get this? I've seen so many sisters no, coming no, no. to me that and say, why, but why? That happens a lot. Mm. That happens yeah, they say, but why didn't I? Yeah, why didn't I? Because they've been trying, then they try to meet your demands and then they say they didn't get it. But why is it not just why I did this? Why why the other person? Yeah, I that happens a lot. <laughs> that's what I mean. You see what's happened to your brother? It says the goodness of the Lord leads to repentance. Mm. God is throwing bits of his goodness to him. Yes. To to bring about repentance, and repentance means a change of mind of God. Mm. The perspective of God uh, is definitely going to change. So having experienced, and I like the way God is using this whole, you get a job, you have not even started the job, mm. COVID has started, you are being paid free. So God mm. is using a very interesting template to mm. teach this grace. But many people think that, oh, I, need to earn the blessings of God. Like you said, some people have come to me and said, Pastor, I don't quite understand what's happening. I know I'm diligent in coming to church. I know I'm, I'm a good worker. I'm very regular in paying my tithes. And yet, uh, things are not well, just working out right for me. I, I don't know what to do. So, I, already from their statement, it is clear to me what the problem is. You, so, you are hoping that or by you, you're, you're, you're being diligent, you're paying your tithe and all that. So you're hoping that by that, you are scoring points with God to sort out your life. No. So I try to explain that, look, listen to me. God has already sorted you out. Discover his unconditional love and see that you have already been blessed. 
and with the blessedness you have received from God, that is why you serve him. You are not serving him so that he will sort your life out. Mm. But see that he has blessed you with all blessings. He has validated you. He has accepted you. And you are using now his grace as a, as, um, and you're serving him as a token of appreciation of the mm. things he's done for you. Not that you're trying to do this to score points and to get him to bless you. You've got it wrong. And many people have this wrong. And because they have this wrong, they get frustrated and they start even to speak negative about God. But we thank God. We thank God. I'm quite excited. I'm so happy. Um, I'm trying to read. Uh, let me read what Sister Head has written here. Mm -hmm. Wonderful spiritual food and fellowship. God's blessings. Dear amazing beloved family. God be pleased. Praise. Sorry. God to live now. Yes, we're all living. <laughs> all right. Amen. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Pastor Robert. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Pastor Robert. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank, you. Yes. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Robert. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.